as a business, you have a much broader responsibility than just making money. You have to make money, you have to make a profit, otherwise there's really no reason for running the business. Uh, but that said, you need to assume a broader responsibility and, and make a broader contribution to society. What we learned is these things are not in any way in opposition to each other. In fact, I do fundamentally believe they very much go hand in hand. The first major turning point for our transformation from fossil fuels to renewable energy was in September 2008, where um, our CEO at the time announced a new vision. When we uh, started talking about this vision, 85% uh, of, of the company's power and heat production came from fossil fuels and 15% came from renewables. And the vision was that by 2040, this would have flipped around it was the realization that long term it would not be sustainable uh, for us to be uh, producing energy based on fossil fuels. In 2006, we started project development in, for a large coal-fired power plant in Germany, in uh, Greifswald. They knew that we were uh, world champions in building efficient coal-fired power plants. At that point in time, there was recognition, there were sustainability issues around coal, but the, the realization back then was still, we need coal. In 2008, the local uh, resistance uh, started building up and the board of directors decided to terminate this development project. We realized uh, that our thermal power plants, uh, they were not uh, a sustainable business, both from a financial perspective, and we could also see that from an environmental perspective, there would come more and more pressure. Uh, so, so, so therefore it became quite clear to us that that was not an area we wanted to invest in. We needed to change and we needed to be at the forefront of change to avoid being left behind with a dying technology, leaving us in a position where we would not be shaping our own destiny. When you have worked with a business for many, many years, uh, you get emotionally attached to a business. Uh, and, and not only the business, because you know the, the risk profile, uh, you, you know the value chain in that business, but also the people working within that business. And, and then to, in a way, disappoint <laughs> one part of the business uh, and then say, no, we don't want to invest, uh, we, we, we want to invest in another area because it's here we believe we have a future. That, that was really hard. If you get cornered and you can't find a way out of that corner, obviously that can be life-threatening for a business. Uh, there was very little growth uh, in the business and it was essentially standing on a legacy business platform uh, which had uh, very little value creation to offer. Uh, so that's basically where we began to, to, to realize that we had to more fundamentally transform the business. We saw that we, we couldn't continue uh, on the track we were on. Uh, so we looked at uh, our, our businesses uh, and, and found out that the only place where we, in a way, had a competitive edge and we could, if everything went well, look into a scalable business, uh, that was the offshore wind. We were looking into, an, uh, into our inventory. So what, what did we have uh, in terms of an existing platform on the technology side? Where do we have competences and skills? Um, and where can we, could we build sort of a competitive advantage? Uh, and that was very much on the wind power side. And that of course caused uh, a lot of sort of pushback and resistance uh, in the company, um, especially sort of that it was not clear to everybody, why are we doing this? Are the, is the world really sort of changing so much around us? People were sort of saying, yes, you can technically do it, 
but it comes at huge costs and uh, it's sort of an engineering dream. It's not something that really gonna gonna change how we power societies. I can tell you the first commercial scale wind farm that we built in Denmark was not a, a success and actually didn't work. The turbine did not perform the way uh, we had hoped for, which meant we and our, our contractor had to demount the turbines, bring them back to shore, retrofit them to make them really work in an offshore environment and install them again. So the, the very first project was an expensive uh, and uh, a challenging learning curve we had to go through. Before I joined the wind industry, I was uh, executing uh, and constructing roads in Africa. And at that point of time, my Danish uh, boss came and visited me on the road. And he actually said, something new is happening in Europe. And it's called offshore wind. I didn't doubt it because I could see from my environmental uh, heart that this was a way I could contribute but we had to reduce the cost, we have to make it smarter, we have to make it more efficient. So it's, it's not one place we have been uh, optimizing, it's been a mindset in the industry. So we did, for instance, an, an agreement, a master agreement with Siemens uh, for the delivery of 500 turbines. I mean, that was uh, significantly more than what was installed at that time. And uh, the financial commitment behind it was uh, mind-blowing, not only for us, uh, but also for our suppliers. And the only way of uh, doing this economically was to do it at scale. There's a learning around once you have found a technology or a business or a product where you have some competitive differentiation and there is a growth opportunity, you should go all in and you should really devote yourself and your capital to mobilizing behind that opportunity. First thing I would say is it's not just governments that change the world and it's not just businesses that change the world. It has to be governance and business working together. You know, businesses can be quite good at getting things done. Governments have a key role to do in setting the agenda, describing a vision, maybe setting some targets. And in that balance of energy security, energy cost, and the environment, or carbon, we in Offshore Wind got a very st strong message from government at the early part of the last decade, offshore wind was too expensive to play a major part. And that was a formative, transformative, clear message. And the industry, we set ourselves a target for the cost of electricity from offshore wind and end to end started tackling that. We had to bring costs down because it was clear to us uh, the government support and the support of society for offshore wind as a new technology class will not uh, remain unless we bring down the costs and become you know, competitive. So that's where we formulated uh, a target, a round figure, uh, a number which seems at that time completely crazy. And uh, we did a top-down decision, which was not backed up by any sort of calculations. It was a revolution for the industry to make a statement uh, which everybody in the industry subscribed to. What we've done is we've set a long-term vision for the company of contributing to a world that runs entirely on green energy. Then we translate that into a strategic business ambition, which is really to become a global leader in green energy. We set a handful of targets to basically guide that ambition, something that basically provides some tangibility to the longer-term ambition. And from there on, we basically roll that back into a set of action items for each and every employee in the company. Uh, things that we would expect that particular member of the team to focus on over the next year. If uh, we are pursuing the right long-term vision, the right long-term targets, and we execute Monday morning what's needed to move us in that direction, then we're gonna be fine. I can see that most of colleagues uh, joining us are really like motivated 
by the company's purpose and vision. We are doing the right things in, in the market and I think we are doing something good for Taiwan. But we are at the front line of this battlefield to make things happen. So we know how we're going to develop and construct and operate the wind farms. But our stakeholders have not gone through that journey with us. I think we need to really take every chance to communicate with them and also be patient and also be understanding throughout the, the communication um, process. Like, it means, like, what I want to be when I grow up, because I'm, like, close to a wind turbine. And then I have another one over here, and here's a little, like, whale. Those early days, I would say, for the first year and a half or so, it was simply just getting people comfortable with the industry and our company. I would say our biggest tactic was we did not sit behind our desk. We attended every and all meeting that you could think of that discussed energy issues, political issues. Um, it was really that true kind of grassroots engagement uh, that we were doing with folks here in the United States. It's a lot of hard work. Again, you know, when we came into the, the market a few years ago here in the U.S., people told us we were crazy. You know, we'd never be able to do this. Um, and here we are, we're doing it. And the question is no longer, when will offshore wind be a reality in the U.S.? It's, when is it going to become bigger and better? I mean, you can, we can say this off the record, Nick, and then oh, I yeah. just wondered if there were any moments when you thought, oh, this was maybe a dangerous move. No. <laughs> I never had any reservation that this was the right thing to do. I mean, the world depends on energy, so we needed to make renewables work. Otherwise, we, we, we would not be able to power a modern society in the future. By 2025, our production will essentially reach carbon neutrality. It is now cheaper to build offshore wind farms than developing new coal or gas-fired power plants. The same, by the way, is true for onshore wind and solar energy. This is a major breakthrough for the green transformation. We must be ready to make near-term sacrifices to get it done. And as it was said earlier today, business as usual is indeed not going to be enough. We cannot tell our grandchildren that we failed to protect the planet because we were too focused on protecting our own well-being. We must act now. You need to face that reality. And you need to make decisions as to how you move out of those legacy businesses and start building a new long-term business platform. If you really want to endeavor onto a new roadmap, make sure that you have, uh, you have the dots in place um, in terms of uh, proving a concept, having uh, the right competences and skills, and then really sort of think about how to scale, how to scale up uh, and what it, uh, what it takes. Look at your, your stakeholders. Uh, look at uh, outside the companies. Who are the stakeholders? Who are the partners um, that you need to Team, team up with uh, and join forces in order sort of to move, uh, move forward. When you're talking about a transformation of this magnitude, it's, it's impossible to sort of chart a linear path and say, okay, we're here, we'd like to go there. That means that we have to take these five steps because, uh, yeah, you can't. You will work in interplay with the environment with a lot of different factors. So you need to do something and then sort of in a way see how the world responds. Uh, how does that work? And if you then see, well, it works fine, then you'll take the next step. Each step, of course, has to make sense and they all have to point in the direction that you want to take. But it's not possible just to sort of draw out a linear path and say, this is, this is the road we're taking. You see many companies having a vision of something that the company would like to achieve. It's often a vision about what the company should be. 
rather than a vision of what is the contribution the company can make to a better and more sustainable long-term future for the planet and the world. And it's an important distinction because many visions are really about the company would like to be this or that. But I think for it to be truly aspirational, it actually make, has to make a bigger contribution. It has to be a bigger idea than just, it has, it's just, it's not about the company. It's about what the company can do, what the company can contribute to a more sustainable world. When we started the journey, 7% of our profits came from renewables. Today, it's close to 100%. So in that regard, the transformation is pretty much complete. So you could say there has been a lot of, I would like to think, calculated risk taking in the company, uh, but it has built a certain culture, uh, a culture which is quite entrepreneurial, uh, a culture that is ready to make big decisions in uh, relatively fast processes um, and, and assume quite a bit of, of risk. And the question is, how do you preserve that culture? Uh, the journey we have ahead of us is all about green growth. The task in front of us is enormous, but what that means is massive growth opportunities. There's a transformation to be done. There is global infrastructure to be renewed and changed, new technologies to be deployed, massive investments to, to be funded, and thousands upon thousands of people who've got to bring their professional skills and disciplines to bear on making it all happen. That is an incredible opportunity for business. That's the kind of growth opportunity for business, the kind of pull, demand pull, which businesses love. It has been a difficult transformation, absolutely. But if you get the right momentum in the organization, you can do much more than what you could imagine. The next step for us uh, is to help the world transform. We now face the opportunity from a strong platform, but also the obligation to ensure we don't stop here, that we don't rest on our laurels, but that we say, how can we contribute globally to scale and accelerate the solutions that are already there? But how can we also ensure that we stay an innovation leader and crafting new solutions that will make it even easier, even more ambitious to accelerate the journey that the world needs to be on? I believe that Erste's next transformation is to leverage the strengths and the insights and the capabilities we have to ensure that we help countries all over to make a green transformation uh, that, that works for everybody and accelerates the fight against climate change. Because the biggest risk of climate change is the perception that somebody else is going to solve it for us. And that means that everybody who has a position in society or in a company to be able to act through clarity of direction, through courage of taking action, we have an obligation to do so. And to me, the word obligation is vital here. This is not just an opportunity, it's an obligation on top. <laughs>